This week I want to talk about baptism and I want to give you several reasons why if you haven't been baptized you need to be. Number one, it is a church ordinance. We believe that Jesus gave two ordinances for the church, two special things to remember him by. One is the Lord's table where we take bread and a cup and it reminds us of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus for our sins. Second, we get baptized, where that also is an ordinance of the church that we obey that reminds us of what he did. Number two, because it's a picture of the gospel, just like the Lord's table reminds us that God took a human body and died for us and shed his blood for our sins, Baptism is also a picture of the gospel. Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection for our sins. The word baptize actually means, uh, when they, in the English Bibles, they, they should have translated that word. Instead, they just carried it over from the Greek. It's the Greek word baptizo. But what it means is to immerse, to dunk into. So when somebody gets baptized, they are immersed into water. That's what the word means. We are buried with him in baptism and raised up in him. Baptism was commanded by Jesus in Matthew 28, the Great Commission. It says, go and make disciples of all nations, all peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism was practiced by the first church. We're going to talk about that in another video this week. But the very first church, the very first day it was born, Peter and others preached the gospel. 3,000 people received his word, and they were baptized that day. It's a symbol of identification with the gospel, as I've said. Romans chapter four, uh, 6 and verse 4, it says, Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in a new way of life. When we baptize somebody, we bury them in the water. We immerse them under the water and we raise them up out of the water. That's a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. It's also a picture of the fact when you get saved, you bury the life you had, the self-centered life you had, the sinful life you had before Jesus, and now you walk in a new way of life, living for Jesus. Last thing I want to say about it is it's a way to publicly confess Jesus as Lord. Romans 10 and verse 9, it says, If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You say, well, where do I confess Jesus is Lord? How, what's that all about? Matthew chapter 10. It's interesting. It says in verse 32 of Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who acknowledge me before men, confess me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven, but whoever denies me before man, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. So it's important that we publicly confess our faith in Jesus Christ. A great way to do that is by being baptized. We baptized uh, several people uh, last week. We got several people going to be baptized in two weeks. As we baptize people, we read their story of how they gave their life to Jesus. It's a great way for their testimony to go out. They invite all their family and friends. Everybody in our church hears it. Everybody online hears it. They have publicly confessed Jesus as Lord. Let me ask you, have you been baptized? Have you been baptized biblically? More importantly, have you been saved before you were baptized? We're going to talk more about that, but I, this is an important subject, and it's one we need to get right.